So, finishing up a three-game set against the Troy Trojans here at home this afternoon. Dolphins looking to bounce back after suffering its first setback of the season on Saturday. Scott Manzi, Mason Viner with you here this afternoon. Christian Graham towing the rubber for the Dolphins in this one as he makes his second consecutive Sunday start on a sun-splashed afternoon here at John Session Stadium. It is warm, temperature creeping into the low 80s, unseasonably warm for this time of the year as the last Sunday of February is upon us, but Jacksonville hoping to remain hot. Now five and one on the season to start the year, and Mason, uh, it seems like the big key for today, along with the pitching, of course, is for Jacksonville to find a little more success with runners on base here today after stranding a bunch through the first few games of this series. Yeah, on Friday night, once Gambler got in for the Trojans, he seemed to settle things down. Dolphins, a lot of base runners throughout this series. A couple steals also, that's something to watch. Uh, been really aggressive on the base paths, just got to drive them in today. Yeah, we've seen Jacksonville as uh, multiple steals in four of the six games they played in this year, and we'll try and get active on the base pass again. I know that was a kind of the way the team was built back in 2020, and we saw a little bit of it in that shortened season. And then with some personnel changes before the 2021 campaign, Jacksonville did not run a whole lot last year, but they've got some speed out there. They're using it. Christian Graham is done warming up as the Dolphins in the green tops here at home this afternoon get set to go. And it's Rigsby Mosley, the left fielder, who starts things for Troy. Mosley making his eighth start of the season. Six for 26 so far with a young year. He bats left-handed as he digs in Troy and the All-Grays here on the road today. First offering from Christian Graham is grounded to the right side. A high hopper that is fielded by the first baseman, T.J. Curry tosses underhand to the covering Christian Graham, and there is out number one. One pitch, one out for Graham and company. Let's give you the Jacksonville defensive alignment here this afternoon. A couple of changes out there. Jonah Diaz still out in left field for Jacksonville with Cam Ridley in center, Blake DeLomeler in right. That has become familiar to Dolphin fans so far in this young season. Jackson Grabsky gets the start over at third base. Chase Malloy at short, Jesus Pacheco at second base, and T.J. Kurd getting the start over at first. Jake Berg doing the catching here today. One out, and the base is empty, and the first pitch is a fastball that misses high and away to the right-handed swinging right fielder, Colin Summerhill. Summerhill, <coughs> one for three. Yesterday, he reached twice on balls. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball away. Summerhill, 385 hitter is one of the higher averages in this order, already in double-digit hits this year with 10. Ground ball up the middle, and it is Malloy ranging to his left. Fields throws from behind the bag at second base, and his sidearm toss beats Summerhill to the bag, and there is out number two. Two ground outs thus far induced by Graham and the Dolphins. First baseman, number 30, William Sullivan. Two down, nobody on for William Sullivan, the first baseman. Sullivan, a guy who is certainly built like a power-hitting first baseman, 6'4", 232, the sophomore from Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, and he starts things off with a strike to Sullivan. Graham looking for a quick first inning in the 0-1 pitch. is downstairs on a breaking ball to even the count at one. Sullivan this year has two extra base hits, a pair of doubles out of his seven base knocks this season is driven into the 1-1. He checks his swing. They appeal down to third. Yes, he did go around, says third base umpire Robert Bauer, and it's 1-2. and two. Really strong game for Sullivan yesterday. Reaches base three times, two hits. He came around to score twice as well. 1-2 pitch. Fastball runs down and in on the lefty swinging Sullivan, evening, evening the count at two. Two outs, bases empty, top of the first. Troy at the plate here on this Sunday. The 2-2 offering from Graham, and he misses high. Graham trying to avoid uh, what has been a bit of a sore point for Jacksonville pitching at times this year, and that is that two-out walk. 3-2 pitch, and he hit him. So not a two-out walk, but a two-out hit batsman, and Troy has a base runner to start things here in the first as they try to extend this inning. And 
I know that Sullivan has to be feeling that one as he is really favoring that right leg now. That one hit him, I think, right above the knee. And the trainer has indeed come out to take a look. Sullivan started really quickly down the line to first base, and then when he got a few paces away from the bag, started limping noticeably. He has walked off into foul territory on the right side, did a couple of hop skips, and shook that right leg to try and loosen it up. Yeah, that was a good stinger right there on Sullivan. Not much of a chance for him to move out of the way of it. No, that one came in hot and caught him right there on that right leg in the thigh area. First time he's been hit by a pitch this year. Graham shifts to the stretch, and his first pitch misses down and inside to Seth Johnson, the DH, another lefty batter. Johnson making his fourth start of the season, batting 357. And Jake Berg has decided he wants to go out and have a word with the pitcher Graham, who got out to a nice start, inducing a couple of ground outs and has missed the zone with his last four of his last five offerings. Sullivan probably not a much of a threat to run here, especially after taking that one off the leg. But he takes his lead, a pretty good one down at first, 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss and an excellent breaking ball to Ty Johnson and not. He stopped, tried to stop about halfway through that swing and it ended up going around. You got to make up your mind there. Can't be checking the swing that late through the plane. Ball and a strike here on Johnson, the DH, the pitch. Strike two called as it catches the low inside corner to Johnson. Graham doing a nice job locating inside there. And he is again, guy has two strikes on a hitter. This time he tries to put away Johnson to end the inning, something he could not do against Sullivan. The last batter he faced, the one-two. Swing and a miss. Got him on the breaking ball away. And the first strikeout of the ball game for Christian Graham. Strands a man at first and holds Troy off the board in the top of the first. Dolphin first wraps up coming when we return. No score yet between Jacksonville and Troy, you're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Baptist Health, proud to be the official health care provider of the Jacksonville Dolphins. Baptist Health, changing health care for good. here this afternoon as the Dolphins look to take a second consecutive series to open up the season here at home. And it's the top of the order. Chase Malloy, Jonah Diaz, Raymond Gill, today's designated hitter, leading things off for JU, facing off against starting pitcher Bay Witcher, which may go down as the best name we've had thus far in this young 2022 season. Witcher, the right-hander, making his second start of the season. Six innings pitched for him in his debut last week, Mason, and he got a win for Troy in their season opening series sweep of Holy Cross last weekend at home. Yeah, Witcher able to go six strong in that one. Gives him eight hits, sends down sevens on, seven on strikes, earns three runs. been saying throughout this series not too much to go on early season action still going 
yeah. across the country as we wrap up February. Yeah, do not extrapolate too much from what we have seen here in this first week plus of the season, but always nice to get off to a nice start like Butcher did last week, and he starts things off well here today with a strike at the bottom of the zone to Chase Malloy, Jacksonville shortstop. Bats right-handed. The righty-on-righty matchup continues as Witcher sets and delivers. And a ground ball sneaks its way to the left side. Backhanded deep in the hole. It's short. The speedy Malloy dives in head first into first and is safe. It was an accurate throw, a low throw from Hall, the shortstop, that one hopped into the glove of the first baseman, Sullivan. We already documented his 6-4 frame and the ability to stretch down there. And Malloy decided to dive in head first. It, Sometimes a scary play if you're a coach, watching your guy potentially with a hand exposed there, but he gets in, beats it out, infield single to start things. And Scott, you just mentioned strong starts to the season. How about the leadoff batter for the Dolphins, Chase Malloy? Yeah, entering today with a 571 on base percentage. You can't ask for much more than that from your leadoff, man, and it just went up. He's at first with good speed as Jonah Diaz stands in. First pitch he sees, he takes at the letters for a strike. Well, Loy's done a really nice job of playing games with these Troy pitchers throughout this series. He's stolen a base or two. See what he does there as he's taking a long lead off of first. Malloy establishes his lead down at first base as Witcher comes set, working from the first base side of the rubber and delivers the 0-1. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Got Diaz out in front of that one, and it's nothing in two. Diaz off to a strong start in his freshman campaign. is driven in six. Looking for his first of the weekend. Runner at first. Nobody out. The 0-2 pitch. And that one stays up to Diaz, who displays that strong batting eye as a young gun. And he takes ball one. And Jonah Diaz, a guy who was documented this week by head coach Chris Hayes. Would have been somewhere contributing for this team if it hadn't been for the injury to Eli Flowers. That was just the door that opened, and he's taking advantage of it. One, two, bounces in the dirt. Malloy take it off for second. The throw is high down to second base, and Malloy slides in safely. So a dirt ball read for Chase Malloy allows him to move down to second base. And the play from Hall there at second, saving at least third base there for Malloy. He jumps up there. Grabs that one, throws down the tag, and just slid by Malloy at that point. Yeah, he did a great job getting up just to save that one, as you said, from sailing into center. That ball bounced in front of the plate, and the catcher Stearns, that throw got a little bit away from him. So RBI opportunity here for Diaz in a 2-2 count with nobody out. The pitch, a breaking ball fouled back to the left side, and we'll do it again. Benz, as a reminder, please return all foul balls to one of the Diamond Girls in the grandstands to redeem a prize from concessions. Thank you. Jacksonville has been dynamic scoring early so far this season. Have scored first in all but one game so far this year, and a lot of that coming in the first inning. And Witcher turns and throws back to second. Malloy back in standing up. Malloy had already started to creep back toward second base a little bit there, and then Witcher spinning toward the bag over at first to turn around and make that throw. Plenty of time for Malloy to get back. Another 2-2 to Diaz, and he swings and misses at a breaking ball and strikes out. So Bay Witcher picks up his first strike out of the day, his eighth of the year, and there is the first out here in the bottom of the first. Brings up Ray Gill, the DH. Raymond Gill. Gill has started every game this year. He, this is his second game starting as a designated hitter. He has driven in what is tied for the team high seven runs this season. Three extra base hits, all doubles. Part of his team best 11 hits this season. The Miami transfer doing exactly what they expected from him in that three hole. And he stands in with a runner at second and one out. Another throw back to second base, and this one bounces into center field. Malloy is being held up, and time was called before the throw back to second base by Gill. Oh, 
that's unfortunate for Jacksonville there. And, well, no one to blame but themselves for it. It's just a bad timing for the time call. So Jacksonville still with the runner at second base as Witcher settles in again. Now his first pitch to Gill. And he locates with a slider on the outside edge for a strike. This game has already ground to a halt, and we're in the bottom of the first inning as Bay Witcher is trying to hold a man on. Runner goes, 0-1 pitch is driven out to deep right field, but playable in right for Summerhill, back to his right. Malloy had to put on the brakes and head back to second base. No chance to tag up on the play, and a well-struck baseball, but not hit quite hard enough, and that is out number two on the fly out to right. It's up to T.J. Curd, the first baseman, to try and get Jacksonville on the board now here in this first inning as Jacksonville brings a lefty up for the second time here in the first. Curd trying to get going, still hitless in his Jacksonville career. This is his fourth start. He's 0 for 5, has walked three times, so has an OBP of 375. So finding ways to get on base, but you know he'd love to get his first career hit right here breaking ball strike one at the top of the zone eyes are on Malloy here he's been really aggressive so far in this forcing Witcher to step off quite a few times here and check on him he ran on the fly out by Gill oh one pitch a uh, check swing on called strike two that just catches the inside corner. Another breaking ball to Curd, who has definitely been looking fastball based off of how he has stood up there in these first two pitches. And Witcher has gone the other way against him with success. He's ahead 0-2 in the count. Runner at second base. Nobody, or two outs, excuse me. No score yet between these two. Jacksonville trying not to squander an early scoring opportunity. Witcher, the 0-2. Curd swings through a fastball and strikes out. Bay Witcher with a pair of strikeouts and strands a man at second base. And Jacksonville held off the board in the first. Scoreless through one here at John Session Stadium. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Sunday afternoon at John Session Stadium. No score yet between Jacksonville and Troy. The rubber match here this afternoon. And Christian Graham back to the mound facing the catcher Clay Stearns to begin things in the second. Scott Manzi, Mason Viner back with you here. Jacksonville looking for a series win for the second time in as many weekends. First pitch from Christian Graham. He goes to the slider, locates on the outside edge to the right hand is swinging Stearns for strike one. Looking for Graham to stabilize here in this inning. Lost himself for a second in the first. 
was able to get it off to a strong start. Foul ball poked out of play to the right side. Quickly 0-2 here on Stearns. Stearns went two for four with a pair driven in in yesterday's win for Troy. He chases a slider down and away for a strikeout, and that is back-to-back -back fanned by Christian Graham here from the end of the first to the beginning of the second, one out. Center fielder number 33, Brandon Schreff. And if there's one thing you can count on, with Jacksonville pitching under pitching coach Jerry Edwards is a lot of strikeouts. First pitch is a strike called to Brandon Schrepp, the center fielder. He again went to the slider to start things and again got a strike call. Boy, you love to see that. Attacking the zone early, filling it up, getting ahead of hitters as Schrepp asks for time and receives it. Line drive up the middle into left center field, and that is down for a base hit. The first of the day for the Troy Trojans, and it comes off the bat of Brandon Schreff and gives the Trojans a one-out base runner. Third baseman number 51, Easton Kirk. So with one out and one on, Easton Kirk, the third baseman, climbs into the box. Kirk has been... Very hot to start the season. Enters today with a 471 average. This is sixth start of the campaign. He's 8 of 17 with three doubles and two home runs. And the guy's batting in the seven hole. First pitch misses down and in for ball one. That one base percentage for Kirk up by 550. Kirk yesterday did not start. Came off the bench and delivered a base hit. A double as he takes a strike to even the count at one and one. He went 0 for 3 with a trio of strikeouts on Friday night. So Jacksonville, the one team that has been able to slow down Kirk thus far. See if they can do so again here today. Runner at first, one out, and a throw over to first. Low, one hopped into Kerr who just stuck the body in front and took it off the chest in order to keep it in front. Shrepp takes his lead over at first. And another throw over to first by Graham. No tag applied. Jacksonville hoping to win a second straight series after sweeping opening weekend against High Point. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday last week. A great start to the campaign. Runner goes 1-1 pitch. Taken upstairs for a ball. The one-hop throw. Bounces away from the shortstop. Malloy into center. And then headed down to third. The throw from Ridley is offline. And Shrepp is at third base after the stolen base and the throwing error by Berg. Scott, it looked like if Malloy was able to pick it there, he would have had the out. Would have been very close. The throw... A low and a little to the right of Malloy as he came over from short to cover and the one hop throw he reached back and tried to do the swipe tag and was unable to do so successfully so the first run of the day just 90 feet away but Graham comes back with the breaking ball and gets a swing and a miss on Kirk two balls two strikes one out in the top of the second and for Christian Graham this is a good test for him a guy this is where longevity comes in. If you can just focus on this hitter here, infield comes in, and this one bounces away from Berg up the first baseline, but he runs it down. Shrepp didn't even take a step off the bag at third. I'm not even sure if he thought that was a pitch or not. He and the third base coach were over there talking with third base umpire Robert Bauer. But that was indeed a pitch, and it was a ball, three and two the count. Big pitch here for Graham, and he delivers, and it's fouled straight back. We'll do it again. Christian Graham, primary reliever last year in his first year with the Dolphins after transferring in from Daytona State. Getting a chance at the weekend rotation now, great stuff. But 
you know, some of the mental stuff that goes with it on display here. Ground ball to the right side, and it takes a bad hop on T.J. Kurd and bounces over his glove into right field. A run comes in to score on the hard, hard hit single to the right side as Kurd went sliding to his left, and that ball just went sailing over his head after a wicked third hop. Shortstop number two, Jesse Hall. That one just climbs T.J. Kurd there. was not able to really handle it. You would like to see him knock that one down if he can't get it in the glove there. Curd looking for it. He slides down in front of it, just eats him up. Takes one hop that he wasn't expecting out there in the corner. First pitch swinging to Jesse Hall and a foul ball down the right field line that lands harmlessly in foul territory in the right field terrace section. one nothing Troy after the RBI single from Easton Kirk who you know, a hop like that on a ground ball to the right side might have scored a run even if Kurd was able to knock it down, but that's how you know you've got it going in the early season. A one pitch, and that one is ripped into left field, a base knock. Kirk heads down to second, holds up there as Diaz gets it in quickly. And the Trojans starting to come alive here at the plate in the second inning. Three consecutive base knocks. Second baseman number and threatening to add to their one nothing lead with just one out as the nine hole hitter Donovan Wibbs climbs in. When blowing out to center field here today, fairly well. The lefty Wibbs awaits the first from Graham, who gets a called strike on the low inside corner to start things. Top of the order and looming on deck for Troy as they have already worked their way through the order here and we're only in the second. Wibbs has seven RBI this season and he rolls one over to the right side. Kurd fields it, flips to Graham who beat, no he drops it at first. He was trying to locate the bag at first base in what would have been a very close play but he got there before Wibbs but in the process of locating the bag to step on it, he dropped the throw from Kurt. And this is where you would like to see your catcher and your pitching coach walk out there, have a conversation. And here comes Christian pitching Graham. coach Jerry Edwards and the entirety of the infield to try and settle down Christian Graham. Scott Dolphins as well going with a little bit of an interesting infield alignment. Jackson Grabsky has been holding real tight to the grass line playing real in on the third base side this entire inning. Home plate umpire Kevin Flay out to break up the party. Pitching coach Jerry Edwards getting a few final words in before a uh, Slap on the backside and everybody going for a fist bump with Christian Graham before retreating back to their spots in the infield. It has gone strikeout to start the inning on four pitches to Stearns, but then single, 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 error, and Rigsby Mosley, the left fielder and the leadoff man, into the box with the bases loaded and one out. First pitch up and in on a fastball for ball one. Mosley 0 for 1 today, grounded out to first. Last inning. Couple of errors this inning for Jacksonville. This would be a great time for a double play. Infield a double play depth up the middle. 1-0 pitch is a fastball away. What it would not be a good time for is a walk. Because there is nowhere to put Rigsby Mosley. And Mosley set to get a pitch he can look to handle here. Ahead in the count already 2-0. The 2-0 is popped up, foul territory, and out of play left side. Wouldn't be a bad time to get one of those into foul territory somewhere up and down the line either and steal one. 
Not at all, Scott. This is where Graham's got to focus in on what his go-to pitches are. Every pitcher, once you reach this level, has that handful of pitches they know they can locate the zone with. That's what Graham's got to work with here in this 2-1 count. Two balls, one strike to Mosley. The pitch. And he rips one down the right field line. This is hooking foul. And while it got out of here, it was foul by about 40 feet. But it was... Well struck by Mosley in on the hands, able to give it a ride. The count is even at two. Not a bad pitch there from Christian Graham. Maybe now try and go away from him here after running one in on the hands. Bases loaded, one out. one nothing Troy. The 2-2. Swing and a miss. Got him on a breaking ball. Excellent pitch there from Christian Graham. Third strikeout of the game, second of the inning, and a big second out there for the Jacksonville right-hander. Yes, it was way to work from Christian Graham out of the hole, gets back-to-back -back foul balls, gets those first two strikes and works back across the plate and adds a strikeout to his count on the day. You know, it's interesting how a team can have success in an inning but then end up giving up momentum at the end of it if Jacksonville is able to get it out here and prevent a second run from crossing this inning. You have to feel that the Dolphins feel pretty good about themselves heading into the home half of the second. First pitch into Summerhill, buried in the dirt. One and zero on Summerhill, the right fielder bats right-handed and is 0 for one today with a ground out to short. Base is loaded, full of Trojans. Two outs in the top of the second, already one nothing. Troy scoring a run earlier this inning. The one zero slider called strike. Well, they say it's where the ball crosses the plate, not where it ends up in the catcher's mitt. That one ended up in Jake Berg's mitt way outside, but home plate umpire Kevin Flay ruled that that did nibble the corner before it got there. That's a tough pitch to do anything with if you're Summerhill. 1-1, one, one, and he goes right back there, but this one down and further away makes it 2-1. I don't blame Graham for trying to go back to that pitch. If you're going to get that call, that's a, that's a way to get a guy out, that's for sure. The 2-1. Fastball right down the pipe, and Summerhill looking for something else. Takes strike two. Two balls, two strikes on Colin Summerhill with the bases loaded and two outs. Troy threatening. Jacksonville trying to put a plug in this early inning run for the Trojans. The pitch. And a slider that was... Right at the edge of the zone, called ball three. That may be the makeup call there from the earlier one that was called a strike in the at-bat. Uh, but a really good in. pitch from Graham. Look, looked like that exact same pitch that he went to and got called strike. That one actually looked closer. Full count. Deep breath. Graham comes home and throws a fastball right down the middle for strike three looking. A big strikeout for Christian Graham, who records three that inning and strands the bases loaded. Jacksonville trailing 1-0, but the Dolphins taking a little bit of mo into the dugout and ready to get rolling when we return. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network.
It's Jackson Gramsci leading off the bottom of the second inning. one nothing Troy leading Jacksonville. And the first pitch to Grabsky lays a bunt down the left side into no man's land. Barehanded by the third baseman who throws high to first, and Grabsky is safe. Excellent bunt by Grabsky. Charging in, Kirk almost made the play. Scott I'm surprised it was as close as it was. Hard. Well, that, that we've seen that a couple of times already this year. Pacheco has managed to do that. Coming to the plate, first pitch, you see the third baseman deep, and you say, all right, let me sneak one down here. And I know it's early, and I don't want to jinx it, but I think this is the best bunting team Jacksonville's had in a long time. Very rarely have we seen, if any, guys just whiffing or, or fouling bunts back or not getting them down where they want to do. I mean, that one, he did exactly pretty much what he wanted to do with it. He wanted to put it in play to the left side. And then the first pitch swinging is a base hit into right center field for Jake Berg. Jackson Grabsky going first to third. The throw offline. Now Berg to second, and he's thrown out by Kirk. The throw was well offline from Schrepp in center to Kirk at third, but he went up the line a little field and threw accurately into second base, and Berg was out by a few steps for the first out of the inning. So instead of second and third with nobody out, or first and third with nobody out, it is a runner at third with one out. With nobody down in the inning, you would have looked to Jake Berg. Just hold up there at first, take runners on the corner with nobody out, and start to string together a couple of hits. Scott, you mentioned the momentum swings with the Dolphins getting out of that jam. The top of the second here, and maybe he's just swung that momentum pendulum back to Troy. At 8-5-4 put out at second base for the first out of the inning, and here is Jesus Pacheco, and he takes high ball one to begin the at-bat. First A-B today for Pacheco, who has gotten off to a very good start this season. Cooled down a little bit here this weekend, but he is batting in the seven hole for the Dolphins here today. Trying to drive in a run, and he reaches out on a slider and fouls it straight back. One ball, one strike to the Jacksonville second baseman. Trying to drive in his fellow ace on all freshman team selection, Jackson Gramsci, who is currently standing at third. Pacheco, no RBI yet this year. It was pretty good in positions like this as a freshman last year, though. The 1-1. One, one. Big hole up the middle for Pacheco, who swings and misses at another breaking ball and falls behind one and two. I mean, when I tell you there is ample space, you could drive a pair of semis through the middle of the infield right now as the shortstop Hall is playing way closer to third base, and the second baseman Wibbs is playing a little more traditional second base spot at the edge of the infield grass. Now takes a few steps in. 1-2 pitch, and Pacheco fights it off the hands. Pop-up foul territory right side. Long run over there in foul territory, and Sullivan makes the catch. Well, they played him the way they were pitching him, trying to finish everything in on the hands of Jesus Pacheco, and they induced the foul pop-up for the second out of the inning. So it's Blake DeLomeler as Jacksonville tries to avoid another missed opportunity here. You lead things off with a single. You get the guy to third base. And then here they are facing a two-out situation, trying not to leave another man in scoring position. DeLomeler takes the first pitch that bounces away. Here comes Gramsci to the plate, and he scores standing up to tie it at one. Wild pitch, and sometimes you don't need to do it yourself. You get a little help from the other team, and Jacksonville takes advantage there to even things up in the bottom of the second. Bay Witcher trying to be a little too perfect there, and that one got away from him. The catcher, Stearns, took it off the chest protector, but it rolled up the line, and a great dirt ball read by Jackson Grabsky. You can't hesitate on that one, and he did not. Yeah, I was just going to point out the awareness. He took off as soon as you saw that ball hit. It looked like off the knee padding of the catcher back yeah. there, and he was off, and he beat Witcher to the plate. <laughs> yeah, not very often you score standing up on a play like that, and it didn't roll all that far up the first baseline either. 
Now the base is empty with two outs and a 1-0 count to Delamiller, who takes a fastball at the knees for a strike. Blake D. Hitless since opening weekend. He's 3 for 15 on the year. Has seven walks and has been hit by three pitches, though. The 1-1 misses low. When you have a 520 on base percentage despite a 200 batting average, that means you're figuring out ways to get on base and help your team. I was just going to point that out about DeLon Miller. He's been able to work a lot of these counts, create some long at-bats, and reach on balls. 2-1 pitch. Fouls one off the mitt of Stearns behind the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and no one on in a 1-1 ball game in the second. Time asked for and granted to Delamiller, who may have had some dirt blow into his eye. He reaches the green jersey up to rub his face. Steps out for a moment, climbs back in. It is a breezy day down there. American flag in center field blowing out pretty steadily to center on this afternoon. On a partly cloudy day in the low 80s. 2-2 pitch, it's strike three called as Witcher paints the outside corner. And Bay Witcher has not been afraid to share some words as he barks had uh, Blake Delamiller headed back to the dugout on the first base side and ends the inning, but he can only blame himself for the run coming across as he misses on a wild pitch, and the game is even at one. We go to the third. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Jacksonville and Troy here in this rubber match on a Sunday afternoon at John Session Stadium. Christian Graham back out to the bump and misses away. Ball one to Troy's William Sullivan. The 1-0 pitch. And that one in and out of the mitt of Jake Berg, who showed a little displeasure with himself at missing that one. Ball two. Sullivan, one of only two. Trojans, who did not come to the plate that last inning. Only one run crossed, though, and Jacksonville able to tie it up in the bottom half. 2-0 is a strike at the knees. Two-one pitch. Breaking ball at the knees for his strike. Christian Graham now looking for strikeout number five on the day. He comes home and induces a fly ball, slicing away from the left fielder Diaz, who moves to his right, moves to his right, and reaches up on the run to make the catch for out number one. Designated hitter number 12, Seth Johnson. Graham now 46 pitches into his day.
First pitch he starts off with here as he inches ever closer to 50 on the afternoon is a called strike. Seth Johnson, the DH, 0 for 1 today with a strikeout. And then misses inside with a heater to even it at 1. One out, base is empty here in the top of the third inning. 1-1 one, one ball game in the rubber match. Deep breath for Christian Graham. The right-hander sets and fires and runs a slider a little bit in on Seth Johnson. Two balls and a strike. Graham seems like he's got a lot more room to work with on that outside corner than the inside today. It's a big swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Christian Graham in a 2-2 count with one out in the bases empty, delivers and strikes out Johnson looking. Dotted the inside corner with a heater. Graham, five strikeouts here today. And the last two have been backward Ks. Quick two outs here in the third. Graham has yet to have a 1-2-3 inning. He'll need to sit down Clay Stearns for the second time today in order to do so. Base is empty, two outs, 1-1 one, one in the top of the third. Christian Graham comes home with the first pitch and locates on the low outside corner with Heat for strike one. Graham went four and two-thirds in his start last Sunday. Did not earn a decision as Jacksonville came from behind to win that game. Slider in there for a strike at the letters. Nothing in two. But got his weekend starting career off to a strong start and is trying to back that up here. His 0-2 pitch. Ground ball to the left side. It is scooped by Grabsky at third. Pats the glove twice, throws on to first, and throws out Stearns. There you go, Christian Graham. Three up, three down in the top of the third. Jacksonville tries to take the lead when we return. It's Ridley followed by the top of the order. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Ridley looking to get it started as Jacksonville has put the leadoff man on in each of the first two innings of this game. He came around to score. Last inning when Gra Grabsky bunted his way on, went to sec third on Berg's single into the gap, and then came home to score on that wild pitch. So Jacksonville has left one man on base thus far here today after stranding 17 on through the first two games of this series. First pitch to Ridley is a fastball that is ruled to have missed in on the right-handed swinging center fielder. Ridley enters today 4 for 20 on the year. 
Bat held high up above his right shoulder. The 1-0 from Witcher is fouled off. Bay Witcher just crossed the 25-pitch mark. He's at 26 here on the day. Has been pretty efficient up on the mound as he delivers the 1-1. Breaking ball, spoiled foul to the right side. Deep breath for Witcher. The right-hander kicks and fires and strikes out Ridley and looking on a slider away. Tell you what, both pitchers have really used that outside portion of the plate to righties inside the lefties to their credit and success here throughout the course of the afternoon. Yeah, Ridley with some words there as he's leaving the batter's box. A little bit disappointed where that one's located. We had a chippy Sunday afternoon last week between Jacksonville and and high point. In fact, at one point, both benches were warned. And we haven't seen that much here today as Chase Malloy takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike on the outer half. Malloy one for one today with an infield single back in the first. But we have seen uh, some guys with some spirited actions here in the early portion of this one. Oh, one. Another slider, another strike. I think in the rubber match of this one, uh both dugouts getting a little bit fed up with things, but nothing too far out of the ordinary. Uh, personally, as long as nothing gets out of hand, I, I enjoy it. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball lifted in the air out into right center, going back on a trep. He's deep in the gap in front of the warning track. Makes the catch over his shoulder for out number two. I mean, sometimes, you know, baseball's a long season, right? And you don't want to do too much early in the season, but I'd love to see... You know, it's not like Troy and Jacksonville are long storied rivals or anything, but Jacksonville and High Point last weekend were facing off for the first time since the 60s. But, it, you know, there's a little bit of something. You see a team three times in a row. You end up battling with them for, for three consecutive days. You, you get a little uh, spirited and, and fired up as the first pitch to Jonah Diaz goes right through the five hole of Stearns for ball one. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, as long as everybody stays within bounds. But it adds a little something extra, especially to a Sunday outing. 1-0 pitch, change up away, swung on and missed. And Diaz really had a hard time with that pitch the first time up and struck out on it. And that is the third time he has swung on and missed that change up from Bay Witcher here today. 1-1, one one, the count, bases empty, two outs, 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom of the third. Bay Witcher. Comes home and gets a ground ball to the right side. Foul. Going back to your last point, Scott, also adds something to the beginning of the season. You know, February, sometimes it's hard for guys, especially if it's your freshman year, to come in here and be ready to go in February and, and having your team get something going, even if it's a little bit of uh, outside motivation, can help you out. Diaz with a high fly ball down the right field line. Foul. Long run for Summerhill, lost his hat in the process, but that one landed harmlessly into the visiting bullpen, which is still empty at this point in time as Bay Witcher has worked his way through two and two-thirds here thus far and is trying for his first one, two, three inning to match the one from Graham thrown up in the top half of this third. Jonah Diaz still facing a one-two count. Witcher is ready and delivers. A uh, slow breaking ball that Diaz able to lengthen the swing just long enough to get a piece of. It's fouled off the last two since falling behind one and two. Thank you. One two pitch again. Bouncing ball up the middle over the glove of Witcher and bounding its way into center field. Jonah Diaz with his first hit of the day. And Witcher frustrated with himself that he couldn't get to that one. 
Great job by Diaz, though. You fall behind, you foul off a couple of pitches, you get one you can handle, and you find a way to get it done. This kid's so impressive. I'm a big fan of how far Witcher is into this game. You can see the frustration coming off him after that play, and he's, he's really into this one. He's, he's living and dying with every A.B. Eight hit of the year for Diaz, the true freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. Takes his lead off first as Raymond Gill comes to the plate. Gave one a ride out to right field his first time up and flew out. First pitch swing in and lifts one foul to the right side and out of play. Raymond Gill approaches every at-bat just looking to drive one deep. Extra base hit, home run. Really a true power hitter for the Dolphins. And you like it, first pitch swing coming out. Which was showing a little bit of motion. Gill looking to add on to that and maybe take one for a ride. Yeah, see if he could take advantage of perhaps a mistake pitch or something there. But... He's a professional hitter, as they say. The 0-1 from Witcher, and he turns and throws over to first instead, and the throw bounces away from the first baseman Sullivan as he was applying the tag. It went in and out of his glove. And that throw not super accurate from Witcher. Sullivan got a glove on it but couldn't squeeze it, and an error allows Diaz to move into scoring position. Diaz got caught up with Sullivan there, a little collision on the base paths uh, as well. If he didn't, wasn't able to kind of swim move through that one, he, he might have had to stay on first, but Diaz works through Sullivan, and he's on second. Jacksonville can maybe manufacture one again here. Oh, one, called a strike. Scott, it seems like every batter has that same look on their face when that, that <laughs> top corner is getting caught today on You'd think they'd be used to it by now. Here we are in the third, and there have been a ton of strikes called over there. We have gone through the order once already as Gill asked for time. Well, they don't adjust to it sooner rather than later. These pitchers will continue to take advantage of it. Runner in scoring position, two outs. 0-2 oh, pitch to Gill. Strike three called, and Gill very frustrated with that pitch located on the outside corner. Witcher this time talking to himself as he works his way back to the first base dugout. But a big strike out there to strand a man in scoring position. Bay Witcher has fanned five here today as we head to the fourth 1-1 ball game. Mason Viner takes over the play-by-play -play when we return. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Got Manzi now handing over play-by-play -play to Mason Viner as we continue. Christian Graham continuing to work for the Dolphins, and he delivers her first pitch for a strike. Scott Christian seeming to locate uh, those first pitches after a rough start for him. Yeah, he has done a good job of doing exactly what he's asked to do, and that is get first pitch strikes. Graham delivers the 0-1 for a ball taken high. Graham ready for 
The 1-1 one, one driven out to Grabski at third. Grabski's up with it over and Kurt unable to pick that one out of the dirt. And it looks like Scherf will reach first and we'll see how that scored. Oh man, four errors for Jacksonville and we're only in the fourth inning. And it looks like Grabski picked it clean off the dirt there. And or three errors, one. excuse me, but. Uh, for Third Kurt, who was reaching for it, just Kirk. unable to handle it there at first. And Kirk will enter the batter's box for the Trojans. So far today for Kirk, one for one, drove in an RBI on that. And Graham now will check on it and play a little bit of a game of catch with TJ Kurt. First time the leadoff man has reached here today for Troy. All knotted up at one, top of the fourth. And Graham delivers that one. And it's like a bit of confusion for the Dolphins. Might have thought they got a strike call there, but it's called ball one. Christian Graham now working. 57 pitches on the day for Graham. And the 1-0 delivered by Graham for strike. Called, counting out a 1-1 one one for Christian Graham. Graham from the stretch, and that one taken high. Two balls and a strike for Christian Graham. Graham has a pitch from the stretch since the second. But, of course, that was in a big spot where he was able to get back-to-back -back strikeouts with the bases loaded to leave them loaded. And then Jacksonville tied it up in the bottom half. Now Graham delivering, and runner goes as Scherf and Berg chases Malloy off the bag there. Not even a chance for the tag, and Scherf reaches second safely. A pretty good jump there for Brandon Schrepp, and not much for Berg trying to throw from his knees. Just in a smart play by Malloy to go over there and make sure that one didn't get into center. Troy with one in scorer's position now. 2-2 two -two count for Graham. Graham delivers it. Hit sharply on the ground by Kirk. Over to Pacheco, who sends it to Berg over at first. And the Dolphins have their first out of the inning. But the runner advances down to third on the play. And you think about that, a ground ball. I don't know if that would have been a double play ball. Hit kind of slowly to the right side. And Pacheco changed his positioning after the runner stole second. But, yeah, that's the ground ball you're looking for in a situation with the runner on first. And now the go-ahead run 90 feet away with one out. Paul stepping into the batter's box. Kirk with a quick delivery over to him for strike one. Kirk not able to locate on the second pitch of the at-bat. It's called a ball on the outside. Graham pitching with the defense in behind him now. Quickly delivers, and that's ball two. Two and one count for Christian Graham. Huge gap up the middle now for the Dolphins. We're playing in on the infield, as Scott just mentioned. Go-ahead runner just 90 feet away. Graham ready. It checks his swing, and not in time. It's called strike two. Seen a couple of those from Christian Graham when he's able to bury a breaking ball, and these aggressive Troy hitters have chased a few. Hall one for one on the day, now facing a two, two count. One gone here in the top of the fourth. And time will be called by Hall. Just quickly back into the batter's box. And the 2-2 delivered. It's Get high in the air and foul. Third base side. To one of the Diamond Girls in the grandstands to redeem a prize from concessions. Thank you. You can tell the way Jacksonville's playing this one. They anticipate this being a tight game throughout. Going infield in. 2-2 two -two to Hall. He went around. Yeah, check swing. He goes around twice there in that out bat. Helps Christian Graham out a little bit as he retires another on strikes. Six strikeouts for Christian Graham already here in this one. 
Man, oh man, just ring them up if you're Jacksonville pitching. Wibb steps into the batter's box for the Trojans. He takes first pitch low, ball one. Jacksonville, six strikeouts here today after 14 on Friday night. Another 10 yesterday. A swing and the miss. Just a one ball and one strike. Two gone here in the inning. Go ahead run for the Trojans, just 90 feet away at third. And Donovan Wibbs will take a look at a pitch that misses. Graham now up by 70 pitches, 68 on the day. The 2-1 delivery, and it's a swinging strike for Donovan Wibbs. Boy, he has... These batters way off balance right now. I mean, we have seen a lot of pitches that are absolutely impossible to hit being swung at here in these last two at-bats. Graham now ready with a 2-2. Hit sharply, first base side, clearly foul. And Graham may have gotten away with that one. <laughs> Look, you've you got guys swinging at dirt balls. Put one in the dirt again. Now, you got to be careful with a runner at third, but don't give them anything they can hit here. Graham now ready with the 2-2. And Ooh. looked like it might have been called strike three there. It looks like everybody on the diamond froze for a second, but ball three called and we'll go full. Yeah, you could sort of hear the crowd react, the, the dugout react, and everybody but Kevin Flay who froze. Graham ready with the payoff. Hit sharply, foul third base side, heading towards the Dolphins dugout and looks like might have put a dent in it over there. This has been good at bad for Donovan Wibbs, the nine-hole hitter, trying to give Troy the lead in this fourth. Wibbs 0 for 1 on the day. Payoff pitch ready again from Graham. Sharply towards Pacheco, who's down with it. He's over to Kurt, and the easy play made by the Dolphins, who worked their way out of a bit of a jam, and we'll head to the bottom of the fourth, knotted up at one, back here with more Jacksonville Dolphins baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville University Sports Radio Network. Strikeout one batter this inning, which means it's time for some Baptist strikeout t-shirts. Make some noise. Jacksonville Sunday from John Session Stadium, ready for the bottom of the fourth. Knotted up at one between the Trojans of Troy and the Jacksonville Dolphins. Mason Viner, Scott Manzi along with you. TJ Kerr, Jackson Grabsky, and Jake Berg do up for the Dolphins. Kerr trying to work his way out of a bit of an early season slump, Scott. The Arizona transfer, redshirted last year out west, comes back to his home state of Florida and still looking for his first hit. And a swing and a mix. Miss at the first offering from Bay Witcher. Witcher working well through this one. Pitch count at 40 here to get a start in the bottom of the fourth. Get a chance to play the field here today as well. We'll see if that maybe helps him out some. Second offering for Kurd. Looks like he might have bit at that one, but called strike anyway. Witcher, strong start to this inning. Quickly working ahead now the 0-2. Ready with it for Kurt, which delivers that one 
Maybe looking for that outside corner that these pitchers have worked with today. A little bit too far. Just to the one and two count. Witcher ready with the offering for Kurt. Kurt is swinging strike three. And TJ Kurt sent down for the second time today on strikes. And now six strikeouts for Bay Witcher to match Jacksonville starter Christian Graham. Jackson Grabski will head into the batter's box. Grabski one for one on the day. The third baseman for the Dolphins. Grabski batting with the right hand, which are ready. Now it's almost a surprise if you see a pitch on the outside edge not get called a strike. And that first pitch for Grabski was called a ball. So Grabski with an opportunity here to work ahead in the count. Which are ready with the 1-0. And looking to locate that outside corner again. This one ends up in the dirt. Grabski quickly with the hitter's count. Witcher said he delivers, and that one taken high. Grabski quickly now with a true hitter's count, 3-0. What do you think he's looking for here, Scott? Probably taking the whole way, I would imagine. And if it gets to 3-1, then probably looking fastball. And he will take a strike, so we'll get to that 3-1 count. Witcher ready with the 3-1. Grabski down to his knees on that one. He fights one off foul. Well, he got the fastball down in the zone and just couldn't quite get the barrel of the bat onto it. Witcher has yet to walk a batter here today. He has yet to allow anyone to reach for free here today. Surrender those four hits and a run. Counts full here, 3-2. One down for the Dolphins in the bottom of the fourth. Grabski waits on it. Down to his knees again. Puts that foul ball right where the last one went. Grabski's one of those full body swingers. He, uh, he gets everything he has in that lanky frame into it a lot of times, so it almost looks more dramatic than it actually is. Grabski steps out, collects himself. Now Witcher comes set. He'll deliver that one, looking for that outside corner, and it looks like uh, Troy ready for the strikeout. Grabski starts walking his way down to first, and it's called a walk, so... I believe that's our first base on balls today. It is. And the thing about that one is uh, that was ball four. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Stern's lunging a bit to his right. So as opposed to kind of sitting there and catching, a lot of times you'll get the call if you're set up and the ball hits where the mitt is set up. But that one forced Stearns to reach more to his right, and because of that wasn't able to get the call. And he tried to get up and sell it real quick, but Jacksonville, Jackson Grabsky on base for the second time today. Jake Berg, the catcher for the Dolphins, will stride into the batter's box. Looks like he was going to take, cut at the first offering from Witcher. He doesn't get a round on it, called strike one. Berg swinging the bat well in the early season. So far today in one at bat, he has recorded a hit. Grabski looking to steal off of that one. Berg fights it off foul, so Grabski will almost have reached the base. He'll take a walk back down to first. That's only the second walk for Bay Witcher, by the way. And his now nine and a third innings of work this year. Berg ready. He's in a bit of a hole here. Two strikes, no balls. Witcher delivers. Berg sends one. Foul. Fly ball heading foul territory. Working towards it and then mm. making the catch. Up by the netting third base side is Kirk for Troy. He is able to track that one almost 
It looked like he was going to take a stumble there in the corner, but able to. Not an easy play. Ahead. Not an easy play. And at the last second, reaching way above his and behind his head, able to steal the out there. Pacheco will pop in the batter's box for the Dolphins. Grabs he's still at first now, two down for the Dolphins here in the bottom of the fourth. Jacksonville have had a base runner in every inning thus far here today. Only one run to so show for it thus far. Now Witcher will go ahead and check on Jackson Grabski. Witcher his season long last year was against Jacksonville when he earned the win. Went seven innings out in Troy, Alabama. Now Pacheco Hits one hard towards the gap out in center, and it finds its way down. Grabsky coming around third. Jackson Grabsky will score in the play as Jesus Pacheco with a stand-up double for the Dolphins. I don't know if Shrepp didn't see that ball off the bat, but he played that about as bad as you could play it. He got a late jump on a ball that was struck really well into the gap, and then picked it up and, and may have had a chance at it, but it changed his mind at the last second and decided to backpedal on it, and then it got away from him and rolled out to the wall anyway. So uh, I'm assuming Shrepp did not see that baseball very well. And for Jacksonville, on a well-struck baseball by Pacheco, he gets his first RBI of the year, and the Dolphins take the lead. Jacksonville gets the go-ahead run, now leading 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth. Pacheco out at second. As Blake DeLomeler will step in for the Dolphins. Games being played out at second base. Witcher with a strong and long look back towards second and now delivers a quick first pitch strike to DeLamalar. Well, Jacksonville's been opportunistic more so today than they have been probably through the first two games of this series, despite just the two runs being scored so far here this afternoon. But you'd love to see a crooked number, you know, take advantage of a mistake or something like that and put some real pressure on this Trojan pitching staff and defense. DeLomler takes a quick break now back into the batter's box. Witcher into his stance, ready with the 0-1. And this time loses one, and Pacheco breaks for third, and he gets in there with a the sliding play, no throw. He was already headed down to third base on that pitch, so he'll get the stolen base for it, but... That ball was the perfect one to steal on because there was absolutely no chance for Stearns after having to slide to his right to block it. Yeah, Witcher with two or three looks back towards second there, and he had the right thought in his mind. Pacheco heads down to third. Stearns handled it well, but not really much opportunity for a throw there. Now Pacheco still playing games even though he's on third. DeLamalar checks his swing. He'll send the call down to first and be in for ball two. Blake DeLomler for the Dolphins with a 2-1 count. Two down here. Jacksonville already with the go-ahead run in the bottom of the fourth. Then it's like a quick mound meeting for the Trojans. Quick. That's an understatement. Skyler Mead on a trot out to the mound. The former pitching coach of South Carolina in his first year at the helm for the Troy Trojans. And, you know, I give Jacksonville pitching coach Jerry Edwards a loving hard time for the way that he trots back into the dugout after making his way out to the mound. But I may have to bring up that he might need to start running out there as well. Hey. That was the shortest mound visit in the history of mound visits. Now Witcher ready to 1. Delomler standing in. He takes one out on that corner that's been worked so well by these pitchers today. Mm hmm. See if he goes right back there. Pacheco on third. The opportunity for the Dolphins to take a 3-1 lead today. Twos across the scoreboard here. Now the 2-2 hit sharply to second by DeLomeler. Up with it and over to Sullivan. And the side is retired by Troy. Jacksonville takes the, the, the lead the floor, in the bottom of the fourth. No They'll lead 2-1 as we get the fifth inning started. Here from John Session Stadium, back in just a moment with more Rogers Dolphins Towers baseball on the Jacksonville Florida's Radio Network from Van Wagner.
Match between the Jacksonville Dolphins and the Troy Trojans. Ready to start the fifth inning here from John Sessions Stadium. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Mason Viner, Scott Manzi, along with you. Christian Graham continuing to work for the Dolphins. Just delivered his 77th pitch of the afternoon. Bunt attempt from Rigsby Mosley that misses. Strike one for the Dolphins. Graham ready with it, and that pitch taken high by Mosley. No bunt attempt there for him. And a 1-1 one -one count. Christian Graham ready for the 1-1 one -one here to start the fifth. No buddy down so far yet in the inning. Taken low, ball two. Two one for Graham, six strikeouts so far on the day. Ready with it in that one. Find some dirt, Berg not able to handle it. Now you're getting to the point where Graham working through the order for the third time here today. And you have to figure with his pitch count starting to climb, Jackson will start to get some people ready. And we'll keep an eye on that. Graham ready with it, this time able to locate the zone. And we'll work the count full. He's at 81 pitches now here on a warm Sunday. Beautiful February weather that we've been having in Jacksonville. A couple cold days there earlier this month. You know, with the count full, puts it on the ground. Hit straight to Pacheco's over to Kurt, and the Dolphins have their first Trojan retired in this inning. And that's four straight retired either via strikeouts or ground outs to second base. So I think that means that Graham is Settling into a bit of a rhythm. Remember, there was a ground ball he got before that to third base. The only man to reach on him out of the last six batters he has faced. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve are uh, two via errors. And now for the Trojans, Colin Summerhill steps into the batter's box. A sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, and a transfer from Trenton College finds his way onto the Trojans his sophomore season. Off to a fairly strong start. Graham with the 0-1. Taken outside, so ball one. One's across the scoreboard. One ball, one strike, one out. Here in the top of the fifth. Graham ready with it from the stretch. That one taken far inside. It's got a bit rare to see a pitcher wearing 16 Pitching to a batter wearing 16 on the baseball diamond. Not not the most common number. It's a swinging strike there delivered by Graham. That was my number. 16. Wore that in college. Was in my Twitter handle there for a while, back before I had to get professional and change it to my real name. 2-2 two -two ready for Summerhill. And a swing and strike three. And Christian Graham has his sixth strikeout of the day. That's seven. He is mowing guys down. First baseman number 30, William Sullivan. William Sullivan, the first baseman for the Trojans. Sophomore from Orlando. And he'll take a first pitch ball. Christian Graham's previous high in strikeouts in a game for reference, five. And Graham ready with his second. That one's delivered low. So 2-0 count, quick hitters count here. Two down in the inning. Struck out five on the road at UCF last year at a win. Graham ready with the 2-0, and that one gets away from Berg, and oh, it, never, it catches Sullivan. William Sullivan, uh, <laughs> he's probably sitting there going, what did I ever do to you, Christian Graham? That's the second time he's been hit today, and he is limping again down to first base. He may just want to take the rest of the day off. That's going to be a long bus ride back to Troy, Alabama with – a thigh contusion and a toe bruise. Seth Johnson will now have a chance. Sullivan off of the hit by pitch to reach first base. Two gone in the inning. So that's the first base runner not via an error allowed by Graham since the Jesse Hall single back in the second. 
Graham now set and first pitch taken high for a ball. Do you think this is the last uh, inning of work that we'll see from Christian Graham today? Probably depends on how this batter goes. He is over 90 pitches on the day, and it is still only his second start of the year. Graham, ready with him. He delivers a strike on the upper half of the zone. 1-1 one, one count for Christian Graham. Two gone here in the top of the fifth. Sullivan is aboard at first. And a swinging foul ball for Johnson. Sent straight back to the screen. Tell you what, if Jacksonville gets five innings of three-hit, one-run baseball out of Christian Graham here today, that is about what you could ask for, what you could hope for. A guy still settling into a new role this year. Graham will have his chance for his eighth strikeout on the day. It's check swing and called strike three. Christian Graham, have yourself a day since his eighth batter down on strikes. Jacksonville able to hold on to their 2-1 lead back here. The Dolphins do up in just a moment on the Jacksonville Sports Radio Network from Van Wagner. This inning, which means it's time for some Baptist strikeout t-shirts. Make some noise. At Ticket Smarter, we know nothing beats the power of excitement of live events. If you're looking for a smarter way to buy tickets to sports, concerts, and theater, visit TicketSmarter.com or download the app today. Smart fans start at TicketSmarter.com, the official ticket resale marketplace of JU Athletics. <laughs> match between Troy and Jacksonville. Dolphins holding a 2-1 lead into the bottom of the fifth, due up for Jacksonville. The nine hitter Cam Ridley, leadoff man Chase Malloy, and Jonah Diaz. Jacksonville looking to add to their lead as Ridley steps into the batter's box. Cam Ridley so far, 0 for 1 on the day, struck out. Bate Witcher is still working strong for the Trojans. Witcher has given up five hits. He has two earned runs. Only one walk on the day. Six strikeouts for Bay Witcher. Both pitchers have been really good here today, and all the runs that have come by, all three of them, as we work here into the bottom of the fifth, have been hard earned. Ridley out in front of the first pitch of this half. Bad swinging strike. Uh, that's it. Dolphins so far on the day, five hits. Only given up three. Ridley ready, shows bunt, and that's called strike two. Well, maybe I spoke a little too soon in praising the bunting a couple of innings ago. Didn't look like Ridley ever came fully set in his bunt stance. Uh, yeah, sort of a half-hearted. Cam Ridley holds that bat over his head, ready for the 0-2. Swinger, full flare out towards right field. And in hot pursuit of that one and taking a Ooh. tumble is Summerhill. He ends up all the way into foul territory, able to hold on to that one. Ridley is retired. <laughs> if that ball ends up dropping, that's probably a triple for Cam Ridley, who can absolutely fly on the base pads. And Summerhill, going a long way, made a great shoe top catch. Chase Malloy, the leadoff man for the Dolphins. He's having a real strong start to his season. Scott, one for two so far on the day today. His walk-up song, Long Live by Florida Georgia Line, blasts out here at John Sessions. Thanks for filling me in on that one. I had no idea who that was. 
I know country songs by like what they sound like. I just don't know whoever sings them. Unless it's like Kenny Chesney, it's really obvious. But you know, Florida Georgia Line actually opened up the pavilion behind us here. Really? And Malloy sends a flare out towards that one. This time Summerhill in hopper suit of it. Hips off the top of his glove. Malloy around first, and he'll be in with a sliding double. Chase Malloy now two for three on the day, and a Dolphins in scoring position. Well, Summerhill made a great play on the last one. Almost made a great play again on this one. Unable to do so. And how about Chase Malloy? Two for three and an extra base hit. And Jacksonville with a man in scoring position again. Jonah Diaz, where's number nine for the Dolphins? One for two so far in the day, he struck out one time. Diaz resting that bat on his shoulder. Witcher having to take a couple looks at Malloy. Malloy will now run. Pitch comes way inside. It's down, down to the backstop. Malloy easily in to third base. Yeah, stolen base for Malloy who took off, and then that one nearly hit Diaz. Barely got out of the way. And it was thrown so hard it came with a hard carom off the backstop and limited Malloy to just third. But Jacksonville with an insurance run just 90 feet away now as the infield comes in. Witcher seems to be struggling a little bit, especially with Malloy out there on those base, base pads. Malloy has been in the head of these Troy Trojans pitchers this entire series. Diaz now ready, 1-0, swings at one, foul ball, heads first base side into the backstop. Yeah, that Skyler one Meade out to uh, assist with hit, sending that ball back into the Jacksonville dugout. Sorry, Mason, but that, uh, that one will go down as a wild pitch, but like there have been several for Bay Witcher with runners on in which he has just sort of overcompensated or overthrown. One ball, one strike, one out. Diaz sends one. And now he'll stand right in front of Sullivan and make him take it to the bag for the out. Malloy holds up at third. Oh, smart play by Diaz. Make him make a play to get the out. Don't just run into him. And Sullivan waited. Sometimes you can, yeah, you could go Javi Baez and kind of run backward and forward and somehow end up leading to a run scoring there. And Malloy decided with just one out he wasn't, going to run into the second out of the inning and probably a smart play when it's all said and done especially considering the man coming to the plate right now and that man is Raymond Kill Dolphins power hitter in the three spot in the lineup today two at bats for him so far no hits for Gill it's third time around here in the bottom of the fifth runner in scoring position Witcher's first pitch in the dirt 1-0 Gill steps out of the batter's box, now back in, taps the bat against home plate, sets it up on his shoulder. Witcher ready with it, and Gill holds off on one. Looks like uh, Witcher looking to locate that corner. Some stirring in the Troy bullpen down the right field line, a right-hander starting to toss and get loose. Witcher at 70 pitches here on the day. 2-0 count for Gill, right where he wants to be. Power hitter for the Dolphins. Ready as Witcher out of his stance delivers. Shot sent, well hit ball. Left field and it's located by Summerhill and that will retire the Dolphins. Chase Malloy stranded on third. We'll be back with six inning action from John Sessions Stadium in just a moment here on the Jacksonville Sports Radio Network from Van Wagner. Want to support JU Baseball? Become a member of the Diamond Club.
Barquin will step onto the mound for the Dolphins. Scott, what can we expect to see from Barquin? Well, Blake Barquin has had an outstanding debut to his Jacksonville career. The big right-hander earned a win in relief against the 10th-ranked Florida State Seminoles on Tuesday, his third appearance. He has yet to allow run over six innings, five strikeouts, two walks, and opponents hitting just a buck 18 off of him. Clay Stearns, the catcher for the Trojans, first batter to face Barquin in a swinging strike one. Stearns, six-foot catcher, junior from Mountain Brook, Alabama, and Sneed State Community College. Barquin delivers strike two on the inside half of the plate there. Looked like Stearns was not expecting that to be called a strike. No balls, two strikes for Barquin. The right-hander ready and time called. Stearns ready back in. Barquin wasting no time. And that pitch taken for a ball. Not, not much opportunity for Stearns there. That one high and away. Well, see if you can get, get a guy to chase. Barquin now working back towards the inside half of the plate. That one finds some dirt off of Berg and quickly now to a 2-2 count. Barquin ready with a 2-2. Goes straight back to that inside half of the plate and He'll work the count full now. Barkwin now ready, count full. And called strike three. Stearns was taking the trip down to first base as strike three is called and Barkwin has his first strikeout on the day. Center fielder number 33, Brandon Schreff. Brandon Schreff now stepping to the batter's box. So far on the day, two for one. Straight for the first pitch. It's fouled sharply back into the backstop, and it will go for strike one. Barkwin wasting no time attacking Troy Batters with his first pitch, finding that strike zone early. So he's come in relief of Graham. And Barkwin misses his own on that one. It looks like it found the hands of Schriff. And it will be a hit by pitch, and he'll advance to first. Third baseman number 51, Easton Kirk. Easton Kirk come up for the Trojans. Kirk so far on the day. One for two. The lone RBI for this Troy team. Barkwin takes a long look towards TJ Card. First pitch delivered. Ball one. Barkwin with the second pitch of the at bat. This one delivered and it will be strike one. One ball, one strike, one out. Barkwin ready with it, delivers that one. Far outside and taken down in the zone. Berg able to handle it. Ball two. Barkman ready with it. Runner on the move. Berg up with it. It's called strike. Tag applied by Malloy, and that will be out number two of the inning. Twos across the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, and now two outs for the Dolphins. Top of the sixth inning here from John Sessions Stadium. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Jacksonville leading Troy 2-1. to one. 
Mason Viner and Scott Manzi along with you for the action. Barquin now ready with the 2-2. It's taken low and the count will work full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs for the Dolphins. No base runners. Derberg able to pick off. Stearns stealing. Malloy applying the tag. Barquin now ready with the 3-2 and it's taken low. Blake Barquin will walk Easton Kirk. Kirk takes his time and will trot down to first. Well, a couple of base runners against Barquin, and both have been free passes, and it's not what you want to necessarily see out of the bullpen for a reliever, but already a strikeout for Barquin and a little help from his defense. We'll see if he can get out of it here. Jesse Hall stands in, the senior from Tallahassee, Florida. One of a handful of players on this Troy roster that spent some time at community college. Strike one delivered by Barquin. He taps one towards Malloy. Malloy will just go ahead and fly towards the second base bag and apply the tag himself, and he'll finish the, the inning. A ground out to Chase Malloy, and Barquin works through it. We'll be back with the bottom of the sixth here on the Jacksonville Sports Radio Network from Van Wagner. Viner and Scott Manzi along with you. Beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Jacksonville, Florida on the campus of Jacksonville University. Dolphins with a 2-1 lead over Troy. First baseman number 33. Due up for the Dolphins, T. number 33, T.J. Kerr. Kerr. Jackson, Grabsky, and Jake Berg. Dolphins have found some success starting from this point in the lineup, Scott. Yeah, Jackson Grabsky's been on base twice today. Berg has a base hit already. Kerr looking for his. We'll see if he can get in on the party. Ooh. That one was really close to being extras for T.J. Kerr there. That's the difference between, you know, a double and your first college base hit and having to see another pitch down 0-1 in the count. Bay Witcher still working strong for Troy. Dolphins have able to produce six hits off of him, two runs. He's only walked one on the day. Kurt with a huge gap up the middle, and he'll take a look at a breaking ball strike two. Yeah, that one was at his chin, called a strike. T.J. Kurt has a couple of strikeouts today. He goes, if, well, no wonder Baywitcher struck me out twice. He's getting these kind of calls. Kurt now ready for the 0-2. Witcher delivers. Kurt swings at it. It's a fly ball. Shortstop ranging back, and now he'll leave it for the left fielder, Rigsby Mosley, who puts it away. <laughs> A uh, frustrating day for T.J. Kurt again. But you stay with it, and eventually he'll break through. I mean, he's a talented hitter. We saw him really excel in the fall. It's sort of a matter of time. Jackson Grabsky will now stand in for the Dolphins. Scored seven times so far in the early season. No RBIs or home runs yet. Grabsky first pitch 
swinging, same spot again. Mosley parked under it and he'll make the catch. Only one pitch there for Witcher and he's able to send Grabsky down for the first time today. Yeah, Witcher at 75 through five and two thirds and if you can get a quick out here, likely come out for a seventh inning of work. Catcher number 20, Jake Burns. Again through seven last year against Jacksonville in their series. Same time last season, just in Troy's home ballpark and a sweep for the Trojans. Berg ready, and he'll see first pitch of this at bat, taking it low for a ball. Scott, that series in Troy, Alabama last year, one that these Dolphins that were on the team might want to forget. It was uh, a very rough weekend. Very for the Dolphins. And fortunately, there aren't a ton of those guys left. And it's shown, I think, in this one as that pitch misses away for a ball. I think it's shown in how this group has kind of responded just uh, overall this year. It's almost like, you know, forget about whatever happened or didn't happen last year. Let's just go play ball. Berg will take a look at another one. He's quickly into a hitter's count and an uh, opportunity for Berg to get a walk here or wait on the pitch that he wants to take a hack at. Witcher still in search of that first one, two, three inning. Try and battle back here. Witcher ready in that one. It's high and Berg will walk down with a 4-0 count. So Berg advances on balls. Just the second walk of the day for Witcher. No. Here we go again. Jacksonville with a guy on base. They've had one on every single inning. And it just, I don't know. I just don't feel like 2-1 is going to be the final score of this one, Mason. It would not seem that way. Both teams able to strand uh, quite a few guys on base today. Dolphins will have an opportunity to expand that lead here with Jesus Pacheco, second baseman for the Dolphins. Pacheco bouncing the bat off of his shoulder. Witcher now set with it. He'll deliver that pitch high and quickly up onto his feet with Stearns there possibly thinking that Berg might try and stretch that one out and steal a base here. And Stearns heads out to have a chat with Witcher who as we documented a moment ago pitch count climbing here on a, again a warm Sunday afternoon in late February temperature in the low 80s and hotter down on that field I'm sure and he is about, or he just did deliver his 80th pitch of the day. Conversation between pitcher and catcher as our uh, home plate buyer steps out there to break things up just as Stearns turned around to walk back. Got fans with umbrellas out there today to shield themselves from the sun. One smart fan has a portable fan with them. I always love the creativity in the crowd on <laughs> hot February days like today, which are now ready with it. Pacheco looking to golf that one, and it finds its way down in left field. Here comes Berg. Berg will hold up at third, and Pacheco with a standing double. And it looked like... I don't know if Berg got off to a real fast start there on that ball. I don't... It feels like he probably should have scored on that play. Berg runs well for a catcher. It looked like uh, a lot of people in the diamond thought Mosley might be able to chase that one down, but a two out doesn't matter. You can't think. You got to just act. But we'll see if Delamalur can come through here. Scott, you just mentioned it. Dolphins uh, base runners every inning, and now it looks like Skyler Mead will walk out towards his pitcher, Bay Witcher. Two Trojans up and working in the bullpen now just one. And Meade will take a moment to talk with his catcher and pitcher. Dolphins with a 2-1 lead, two out in the inning with runners aboard third and second. Pacheco recording the double into left field. Mosley ch chases that one down. Looks like Berg might have had a shot and looks like a pitching change will be coming and we'll take a break here and 
Be back in just a moment with who's coming out of the bullpen for Troy. Jacksonville leading 2-1. to one. More Jacksonville baseball coming up on the Dolphins Radio Network from Van Wagner. Dolphins with a 2-1 lead. Pitching change coming for the Trojans of Troy. The day for Bay Witcher is ended. And stepping onto the mound, Ryan Pettis, a sophomore from Panama City Beach, Florida. Mosley High School, Florida State transfer. Partial line for Bay Witcher, six and two-thirds innings. He surrenders seven hits on the day. A pair of runs struck out six, walked two and is responsible for the men at second and third right now. And it's his teammate Pettis, the southpaw, who tries to keep those runs from coming across. Pettis appearing for the third time this season. Two and two-thirds innings pitched. He has allowed three runs on three hits. Has struck out two, walked two. And it's very small sample size, but the ERA sits at 10-12. Blake DeLomeler, the Dolphin that he will face. DeLomeler, not the strongest start to his season so far. Batting 176 at this point. Five runs DeLomeler has crossed. No RBIs, he'll have his opportunity to record a couple of those here. First pitch, a strike from Pettis. Yeah, Pettis with a big looping breaking ball that catches the upper right-hand corner. Pettis standing at 6-2, number 11 for the Trojans. Pettis ready with it, sets, he delivers, DeLomler looks like he was going to bite on it, he doesn't, it is called strike two, DeLomler quickly in the hole, no balls, two strikes, two outs, two in scoring position for the Dolphins. Well, two curveballs from Pettis to start, DeLomler, you know, hoping for a fastball, I'm sure, and now he's got to work to protect. DeLomler will take time. Mason Viner and Scott Manzi along with you, rubber match between Jacksonville and Troy here on a Sunday afternoon. Dolphins looking to expand their lead. Right now it sits at 2-1 in Jacksonville's favor. Pettis ready with the 0-2. Way off the plate. DeLomler able to hold back on that one. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, first fastball we've seen from Pettis out of the pen, out of the three pitches he's thrown. You mentioned a Florida State transfer did not appear in that shortened 2020 season before transferring to Troy and making 12 appearances 10 out of the pen last year. Pettis taking his time on the mound now. Taps the ball a couple times in the mitt, and he is ready with it. 1-2 to DeLomeler. DeLomeler just holding off of that one. Looks like it might have caught the strike zone there, Scott, but 2-2 two -two count. Yeah, that one was a strike earlier in the at-bat, and DeLomeler lucky that he didn't get rung up on another Breaking ball that time from Pettis. So now DeLomler will face the 2-2. Two -two. Pitch DeLomler with a shot towards the gap. And it will find its way down for a double. Two Dolphins will score. Berg's already around. Now Pacheco crosses the home plate. And DeLomler with the stand-up double. Well, you give a guy enough 
uh, looks at that slow breaking ball, and he gets an opportunity to get a hold of one, and Delamiller did there. That one just hung up, and Blake D turned on it and deposited that one right at the base of the left center field wall, and it felt like Jacksonville needed this, right? Needed a couple of insurance, needed to find a way when given an opportunity, and hey, what better way to greet a new pitcher than by clearing the bases when they inherit two and giving yourself a three-run cushion. And Witcher's stat line right there takes a hit. He earns two more runs on the day. And Cam officially closes the book on him. And Cam Ridley will step in for the Dolphins, the center fielder, the nine-hole hitter on the day. Pettis takes a step off the mound. DeLon Miller at second in scoring position. Jacksonville looking to add to its lead further in this inning. Two have come around for the Dolphins, and they now hold a 4-1 lead. Scott, who else for to deliver in that big spot for the Dolphins and Blake DeLomeler? Yeah, his first extra base hit of the year, and he drives in a, his first two runs of the year. And Ridley able to hold off. He'll look at ball one. And you love to see the bottom of your order find ways. Look at that. That's three driven in by your seven and eight hitters here today. The only three driven in by the Dolphins as the other run was scored on a wild pitch. Balance up and down the lineup. Ridley ready for the 1-0. Holds off on that one, and it turns out to be a good decision. That's ball number two. Remember, Bay Witcher started this inning with a pair of fly outs to left. Got the first two outs on just four pitches and seemed to be headed for potentially a seventh inning of work, but then a four-pitch walk to Berg. Pacheco doubles. Delamiller greets the new pitcher Pettis with a double. And here we are with the runner in scoring position still in a 2-0 count on Ridley. Ridley ready for the 2-0. It's fumbled behind the plate by Stearns, and that's ball three for Cam Ridley. Ridley, now in that true hitter's count, he'll have a chance to either reach on balls here or, or wait for something and, and try and do something to get DeLamiller off the bases and give the Dolphins a 5-1 lead. And Malloy sitting on deck, 2-3 for three for the day. Pettis looking to locate the zone. 3-0 now the count. Two Dolphins down in the inning. And Pettis finds the strike zone. Looks like Ridley thought about swinging the bat there and holds off and we'll see strike one. Yeah, that was a little BP fastball just to get over. And I know how tantalizing that can be, but what you got to do is take and wait to see if you get something here. 3-1 count for Cam Ridley. Pettis ready with it. Ridley swings. That's foul ball right side. Fans, as a reminder, please so Ridley foul sends a foul ball first base side and brings the count full. Three and two. Two down the inning. So chance for DeLongler to get a running start here for Cam Ridley. Ridley one hit so far in this series. Came on Friday night when he went one for four. Be a good time for another one here. Pettis ready with the payoff pitch, delivers that one. Ridley sharply hit third base side, handled and over to Sullivan, and the side is retired. Cam Ridley grounds out there on the play from Kirk over to Sullivan. Dolphins able to do some damage. They had two runs this inning to give them a 4-1 lead. Seventh inning action coming up here from John Sessions Stadium. Stay with us on the Jacksonville Sports Network from Van.
Mason, Jacksonville with a 4-1 lead here thanks to Blake Delamiller greeting the new arm Ryan Pettis out of the pen with the bases clearing double the last half inning. And now Blake Barquin with a little more cushion to work with as he starts out with his first pitch missing down and away to the Troy batter, the nine-hole hitter Donovan Wibbs, who turns and rips one into right field on a 1-0 count for a base hit. The first off of Barquin here so far today. And for the first time since the fourth inning and just the second time all afternoon, the Trojans have the leadoff man on as the order turns over for the fourth time here in this one. Barquin allows a single. Rigsby Mosley to the plate. And exactly what Skyler Reed was looking for for his nine-hole hitter who gets aboard, and Mosley will take over. No hits so far in the day for Mosley. He's 0 for 3. First pitch swinging. High fly ball out to deep right center field, but it's Ridley cruising back to his left. Makes the catch and casually crashes into the wall right on the JOI sign out there in right center field for out number one. So there you go. If you're Blake Barkwin, way to bounce back. You get the first out of the inning on a fly out on just one pitch and now you're a double play ball away from getting out of this one quickly. A defensive change for Jacksonville here this inning. Christian Coypel has come off the bench to take over for TJ Kurd at first base. Runner on first with one out in the top of the seventh. 4-1 Jacksonville. Here's Colin Summerhill 0 for 3. First pitch from Barquin, hit on the ground, right to short. Malloy on to second, the relay from Pacheco on to first. And there's the double tree, double play. And Blake Barquin with a three-pitch inning. And Jacksonville is time to stand and stretch with the Dolphins leading 4-1 to one as we head to the home half of the seventh. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network. Hitting here at John Session Stadium, 4-1 Jacksonville on top. And the top of the order due up for the Dolphins here in the home half. Another pitching change for the Troy Trojans who welcome Bo Fletcher to the mound now. A 6-1, 229-pound redshirt freshman right-hander from Hartsell, Alabama. So Ryan Pettis gets one-third of an inning under his belt, allows the double that put Jacksonville on top four to one. Those runs charged to the starter, Bay Witcher. First pitch swinging, and Chase Malloy sends one our way. Oh, that one went right off the umbrella of the fan to our left here in the stands. Well, that's a good reason to carry the umbrella, despite the fact that you're protecting yourself against the sun. It also protects you against foul balls. Everybody seems okay, just a little startled. <laughs> you could hear it as it kind of banged off the top of that umbrella. The 0-1 to Malloy. Slider that misses low and away. Nothing quite like that to catch your attention.
There's a strike calling at the knees. Another strong day for Chase Malloy. Singled in the first, doubled in the fifth, and he just gets a piece of a low slider. Foul ball, one two count on the Jacksonville leadoff man. Set to be finished by followed, excuse me, by Jonah Diaz and then Raymond Gill. Jacksonville looking to close out a series win here today. If the score holds, that pitch misses over the top of the head of Chase Malloy, and maybe the first time that Malloy has sat there and been thankful that he's only five foot seven. Because it didn't take him a whole lot to duck out of the way of that one. Two and two from Fletcher to the Jacksonville shortstop, who has had a nice day both in the field and at the plate. He asked for time. It looked like he needed it there. He took a step off that foot after that one. Almost caught him in the ear. It's a little bit shaken up by it. Wind is picked up again, working out the left center field as the 2-2 pitch comes in, and Malloy fists one into shallow center field. This could be trouble on the run. Schreff, but he's there in time to make the catch for out number one. One gone, nobody on for Jonah Diaz. Big week here on campus as Jacksonville gets ready for some postseason basketball, Mason. The A-Sun Basketball Championship starts this week, the women's team hosting an A-Sun first round matchup on Wednesday night at Swisher Gym, welcoming Central Arkansas to town. And then the men awaiting their matchup in a quarterfinal matchup. First pitch to Jonah Diaz, pop up in the infield. Fletcher giving way to Stearns, who gives way to Kirk, and Kirk right at inside fair territory, way down the line on the third baseline, makes the catch for out number Two. But the uh, men getting the first round by means Jacksonville will play either the winner will play the winner of the Central Arkansas Stetson, which is taking place in Conway, Arkansas on Tuesday night. And the Dolphins finishing second place in the East Division to earn that first round by as the two seed. Swing and a miss by Gill to start the at bat. It'll be interesting to see what plays out at Swisher this week. Some drama between the Sugar Bears and the Dolphins on the women's side. So we'll get a yeah. look at look at that rematch. Yeah, I'm uh, curious to see. Their head coach left the game in protest the last time as the pitch misses high and a way to even it out at one apiece. She was uh, upset about how the game was officiated down the stretch. The officials actually put some time back on the clock after Jacksonville came from behind to take the lead with – Less than three seconds left, and then uh, they were told her it would be a forfeit as the pitch misses high and away if she refused to bring her team back out on the floor to finish the game, which felt like a petty move from the um, uh, the officials. <laughs> Putting two seconds back on the clock. I mean, point two seconds. Yeah, point two seconds. The there's clock. physically nothing you can do there in a basketball game, and a pitch and it misses away again to make it three and one. And uh, she said, that's fine, but it's a forfeit. It ended up going down. It's just the game was final. They ran the – Final point two off the clock, but uh, it was a drama-filled first matchup between those two, so should be interesting on Wednesday night. 3-1 pitch. Strike two called to Ray Gill as Bo Fletcher has thrown four consecutive pitches all in the same spot, three of them balls, and now one a strike. I'm not sure Stearns has moved his glove at all in the last several offerings. 3-2 count with the bases empty and two outs. The right-hander Fletcher comes home and strikes out Gill on a nice slider to end the inning. Dolphins down in order in the bottom of the seventh, still needed for one as we head to the eighth. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network.
Barkwin comes home, walked him away. And so he has walked two, which brings the tying run to the plate. And pitching coach Jerry Edwards out to have a word with Blake Barkwin. The immediate sign from his catcher there, Jake Berg, was to settle down, give him both of those hands just... Yeah, and, and really it seems like the arm side stuff is what has gone missing here for Barkwin. As pretty much all of the pitches that have missed have been away from the lefty hitters. The Dolphins will have that full infield meeting. Barkwin's pitch count up by 31 now. His first appearance of the weekend after he went long on Tuesday night to earn the win in relief. Jacksonville has used five different guys out of the bullpen so far this weekend. It was Luke Baker for two innings and an inning from Tyler Vogel to earn the save on Friday night as Jacksonville prevailed 6-5 to five to open up the series with a victory. And then in yesterday's game, Parker Murphy went two-thirds of an inning, Leighton Alley a third of an inning, and Bryce Fisher three and two-thirds to end it, but Jacksonville fell 5-3 to three as the Dolphins were unable to get any runs the final four innings of the ballgame after the tie was broken in the top of the sixth. Meeting on the mound concluded. Blake Barkwin back to the stretch and comes home with his first pitch, and that is looped into left center field, and that is down for a base hit and a run scoring one at that. Bar Delomeler goes into second base. The throw not in time, an RBI double for Clay Stearns. Nobody out still here in the eighth, and Troy within two, four to two. Center fielder number 33, Brendan Schreff. And a pinch runner as Stearns appears to be a little lame after sliding into second base. He is limping, favoring that right leg. And he is replaced by Hudson Hartsfield out at second base. Hartsfield, the pinch runner. Runners at second and third with nobody out. And Brandon Schrepp, the center fielder, standing in. Yeah, taking a look at Stern celebrating there. Don't think there's too much uh, going for me. He limped a little bit off of it. By the time he got to the bench, all of his teammates out there celebrate that with him. First pitch swinging, base hit through the hole. It's short into left field. Another run comes in to score. They wave the run around round third. The throw from Diaz to the plate in plenty of time to get the out there. And then a throw to second is a little too late. But a big out made at the plate to keep Jacksonville in front, 4-3 to three for the first out of the inning. And the third base coach asking whether or not he got in under the tag, but maybe just trying to preserve himself a little bit after he sent the runner on what looked like a pretty routine ball into left field and tested Diaz, who came rose to the occasion with a nice throw and really no chance there for the pinch runner Hartsfield to score. And he was sending that runner. Yeah. No, no, oh, no yeah, chance that he was... And now we have a warning from both benches. And head coach Chris Hayes is saying, wait a second, we're an innocent bystander in this scenario. What in the world is the concern here? Troy's third base coach has been desperately trying to get the umpires to come together to review whether or not Hartsfield, I guess, evaded the tag of Jake Berg on that slide. But Hartsfield ended up with his helmet knocked off. I mean, I don't know how else... I mean, he got hit right in the face on the tag. I don't know what else you're looking for. Yeah, I, d I don't really think there is anything to look at. Hartsfield taking that unless he was asking, runner too hard Unless he there. was asking for maybe whether or not there was a block or something like that. And Coach Hayes walking out now, he's saying, hey, man, like, listen, I don't have anything to question you all on. What, what, what are you giving us a hard time for? I thought Flay was about to maybe run – the third base coach for Troy, and instead he just turns and points right at the Jacksonville dugout, goes, that's a warning, turns right to the Troy dugout, goes, that's a warning. And now Coach Hayes is just asking for a little greater explanation. Scott, I agree with you there. I thought he was uh, taking a look down to the third base coach to either apply a warning or, or send the uh, third base coach for the Trojans out of this one. 
Well, to review, a couple of walks here to start this eighth inning. RBI double for Clay Stearns, who's removed for a pinch runner, Hudson Hartsfield. An RBI single from Brandon Schreff. And Hartsfield thrown out at home, trying to score from second base for the first out of the inning. The runner, Schreff, is at second, advanced to second on the throw home. And he is the tying run in scoring position, one out as Easton Kirk steps to the plate as we are finally ready to resume baseball here in the bottom, or excuse me, the top of the eighth inning in a 4 3 ball game. Well, Scott, you are right. Definitely not looking the 2 1 final line. And first pitch changeup on the outside edge from Blake Barkwin for a strike. And maybe this ends up helping Barkwin out as he had a little more time to just collect himself in the process after giving up a couple of well-struck baseballs. Still looking for just an out recorded off the bat. 0-1 pitch, cue shot down the third baseline foul. And for the first time this inning, Bark went ahead of a hitter 0-2. Schrepp at second base, one out. He is the tying run in this top of the eighth. Two spot already for the Trojans as they look to rally 0-2 pitch, and Barkwin wastes one up and away that Kirk lays off of. The lefty swinging third baseman has a single and a walk here today in three plate appearances. Not a bad spot for Barkwin to look today. A lot of leniency on that outside of the plate. Schrepp takes his lead off second base. 1-2 pitch. Off the end of the bat, a foul ball. Kirk just got a piece of it. Another changeup down and away. And if that bat was a half inch shorter, then he doesn't get any of it and strikes out swinging. Yeah, Jake Berg there jumped up into his usual strikeout, uh, bounce up and ready to throw that ball back out to Barkwin, but still a little bit of contact there. That's a really good pitch from Blake Barkwin. We'll see if he goes back to it. Deep breath, he comes home with another one, two, and gets the swinging strikeout. Kirk, angered with himself, slams the bat to the dirt in frustration. And that is out number two on a big strikeout for Blake Barkwin, his second in three innings of relief work. And there are two outs here in the eighth for Jesse Hall, the shortstop. Tying run still in scoring position for Troy, so the Dolphins not out of the woods yet. We'll see if Barkwin, the even-keeled freshman, can come through again here. First pitch to the right-handed swinging Hall, high and away. Went to the slider that time. Hall just one for three today. He's gone down once on strikes. Reached just on a single. And granted into a fielder's choice to end the sixth. 1 0 pitch. It is looped out into right field. The new right fielder Hodges over near the line makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Blake Barkwin strands the tying run in scoring position as Jacksonville uses an outfield assist to help cut down what would have been the tying runner at the plate. We head to the bottom of the eighth, 4-3, Jacksonville leading. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphins Sports Network.
Dolphins built the advantage out to three with a two-run bottom of the sixth, but then the Trojans getting two back in the top half of this inning. Jonah Diaz with his first career outfield assist to retire the tying run at the plate for the first out of that top of the eighth inning, the play of the inning as Barkwin settles down after that. Gets a strikeout and a fly out to strand the tying run at second. And now Jacksonville looking for a little insurance with Christian Coypel getting his first A-B of the afternoon. Came in as a defensive replacement two innings ago. First pitch to Coypel, and it is high and away from Bo Fletcher, who sat down the Dolphins in order his last inning of work. Might be one for nine so far in this series. And he takes a change up away for a strike. One ball, one strike on Coy Pell. Grabsky due up second. Jake Berg third here in this bottom of the eighth. And what Jacksonville hopes is its final wraps of the afternoon. 1-1 one, one pitch. And Coy Pell reaches down to spoil it foul to the left side. And Coy Pell, did he get hit? He did on the arm as he checked his swing. And Coy Pell wears one to start the inning. Third baseman, number five, Jackson Grapsky. Don't think Coy Pell minded much, just a, a little bit of a hard throw with the bat back towards his dugout. And then Man, the one time I think you had to worry about off. with those forearm ones is all of a sudden that hand locks up a little bit on you with the bruise, but he takes his lead over at first. You can see him sort of flexing that hand a little bit as well. Fletcher steps off for a moment. And Grabsky shows bunt, pulls the bat back on a called first strike that Grabsky couldn't believe. Grabsky's had a nice day. Been on base twice, shows bunt again, and fouls it down to the right side. That one was up and in on him, and he offered at it, and now it's nothing in two. So the bunt play likely off here. But Grabsky's been good at bunting in his career. We'll see if maybe Coach Hayes trusts him with two strikes. He is showing bunt, but it might be a slash play. It is. He pulls the bat back and sends it foul to the right side. That is another... Jacksonville baseball staple. Two strike count, show the bunt, pull the bat back slash, and they've had a lot of success with that. The entirety of head coach Chris Hayes' tenure, previously as an assistant, before that when he was a player, it's been a, a hallmark of this Jacksonville program for many, many years. And, and Grabsky really close to pulling it off, just doesn't get himself around on that ball, bat ends up behind and pulls it. He takes a ball down and away as he again was showing bunt at the Start of the windup for Fletcher. Grabsky trying to help Jacksonville pick up a little bit of cushion here in this eighth. The one two. And did he go around on the check swing on the ball in the dirt? He did not on the appeal to first base. Two and two. That one was really close. And now time called by head coach Skyler Mead. And he heads out to head out to the mound to have a chat with his pitcher, Bo Fletcher. Quite a few gray clad Trojans out there in the bullpen. Nobody actively throwing right now, but it looks like they're ready for a pitching change potentially here. And there it is, the sign to the pen for a right-hander to come in for the Trojans. We'll step aside while they make the pitching change. We'll let you know who the new arm is when we return. Runner at first, nobody out, and a 2-2 count on Jackson Grabsky here in the bottom of the eighth inning. You're listening to Jacksonville University.
weekend. He earned the save yesterday, his second of the season, with a perfect ninth inning in which he struck out the side. And Skyler Mead, head coach for Troy, going to his big gun here in the bullpen late in this game, trying to keep it a one-run contest. Oates with his 2-2 pitch, and he misses down and in, ball four. Or ball three, excuse me. And then the throw down to second. I, I butchered that whole thing. So let's reset it. It was a 2-2 pitch that missed down and in. It was a delayed steal for Christian Coypel. And a delayed throw from Bartolero, the new catcher, as well which I was sitting there wondering why he wasn't giving him first base, but it was ball three, not ball four. And Leppy with a stolen base to get into scoring position. Oates, the right-hander, six foot, 247. Appeared in 23 games last year. 3-2 pitch, hit foul to the left side. For the Trojans, pitched 33 and, and two-thirds innings, so three and two record for Oates last tennis. year. Thank you. Oates' his fourth appearance of the season, two and two-thirds so far this season, is not allowed to hit. 3-2 pitch, and Grabsky checks his swing on a pitch low, and they say he went around on it. Scott, I did not see that from our vantage either. point. Nope. And the third base umpire, who is positioned at second with the runner on. Number 20, Jake Bird. Knows he's got a dinner reservation to get to and punches out Grabsky. Scott, so do I, but I'm not calling that <laughs> strike three. So that's the first out of the inning. Oates with his fourth strikeout on the fourth batter he has faced here against Jacksonville this weekend. One out for Jake Berg. Ready on lefty matchup starts with Oates kicking and firing and missing away with a breaking ball. Berg today with a couple of men on base. He singled and walked. And he takes a long time waiting for Oates to come set. Finally he does. The right-hander comes home. The 1-0 pitch swung on and missed. Got him with a breaking ball there. A swing and a miss makes it one and two on Berg. Coypel takes his lead down at second base. Oates comes home. Berg strikes out swinging. Ball in the dirt. Bartolero has to come out from behind the plate and throw down to first and does so in plenty of time to retire Berg. And five Dolphin batters have faced Marquez Oates here this weekend and all five have struck out. So it's up to Jesus Pacheco for Jacksonville with two outs and a runner in scoring position. If the Dolphins are to add to their lead, Pacheco's had himself an afternoon. A pair of doubles and an RBI already. Scored a run back in the sixth inning. Right now his run scored is the winning run as it stands on the scoreboard, but he would like to add a little insurance here. First pitch from Oates. Ground ball right at the third baseman, but it goes off of his glove, fielded by the shortstop, Hall on the run, and Pacheco beats it out. So it goes off of the glove of the third baseman, Kirk. Hall backing it up, able to field it off of the bounce, throws on to first, and Pacheco just beats it out. Hall doesn't get him, but what a play. Delivers that throw, and Pacheco, it was close there at first. Pacheco just beats it out by about a step and a half. So Pacheco reaches on the error. Coypel down to third on the play. 
And Blake DeLomeler, who cleared the bases with a two RBI double in the six, stands in with two men on and two outs. And the first pitch bounces away from Bartolero, who can't find it. And Coy Pell comes home to score standing up. It kicked off of his left shin guard. Bartolero was pirouetting behind the plate, looking for the baseball as it bounced away to his left. And Coy Pell scores easily on the wild pitch. The second time Jacksonville has cashed in on such a play here today. And the lead is now 5-3 Dolphins. And that's a new catcher behind the plate. It was Stearns who was victimized earlier in the game, and now Bartolero this time. Pacheco now in scoring position, a 1-0 count on Delamalar. The pitch, swing and a miss. Otez breaking balls that the bottom just falls out of, and Jacksonville has gone fishing a lot here since he entered the ball game. Like based on Delamler's swing, he thought he had something they really liked there, and bottom falls out on him, swinging strike. 1-1, one, one, puts it on the ground to the left side. Pacheco hops over it, and it's misplayed by Hall at short. So Pacheco with a little gamesmanship as he leaps and hurdles over the baseball as it went skipping to the left side, and Hall Unable to field it cleanly in the second error of the inning. Looks like midair there. Pacheco able to pump his legs, gave it a little bit of uh, losing the ball in those white pants the Dolphins are sporting today, and he advances to third. Two men on, two men out, and Clayton Hodges with his first A-B of the game after coming in defensively. In the top half of this inning, and head coach Chris Hayes, as well as third base coach Brad Wilkerson, down to have an extended chat with the freshman outfielder. Hodges in search of his first hit of his Jacksonville career. He's 0 for 1 to this point. First pitch he sings, sees, he pops it up right side of the infield. Wibbs. Starts back, comes in, and makes the catch halfway between first and second for the final out of the inning. So that ends the Dolphin threat in the eighth, but Jacksonville gets one more, lead it five to three as we head to the ninth. You're listening to Jacksonville University Baseball from Van Wagner on the Jacksonville Dolphin Sports Network.
There's a strike called at the knees as Vogel gets on the board. Two and one the count to Wibbs. Mosley on deck. Summerhill in the hole here tonight. And Vogel just missing low. Three and one. Big pitch here for Vogel, not trying not to put the leadoff man on, but he sails it to the backstop and a leadoff walk to Wibbs, and that brings the tying run to the plate with nobody out in the night. Well, Jacksonville's played with fire throughout the course of today and the weekend, really. Burned them a little bit yesterday. Today, we'll see if they can settle down and get this out here. Just need to find a way to get one out any way you can here, though rolling one would be nice. Mosley today 0 for 4. The man at the top of the order takes a first pitch off-speed strike on the outside edge. Another lefty at the plate as part of a lefty-heavy lineup for Troy. Short lead over at first base for Wibbs. As Vogel misses a little bit down and in now to Mosley to even the count at one. Vogel gave up a couple of hits but did get a strikeout and got all three outs that he needed on Friday night as the 1-1 pitch comes in and it is lifted foul to the left side and out of play one and two. And Vogel on the year, his fifth appearance of the season, five innings pitched, four hits allowed, seven strikeouts, two walks. He's got a win in relief. He's got three saves. As the sun peeks out from behind the clouds, he sets and gets ready to deliver the one-two pitch. He comes home and strikes out Mosley swinging. Strikeout number eight on the year, number one on the day for Tyler Vogel. And there's one out of the night. Felt like Tyler Vogel really needed that to get back and work towards what a strong Cedar sends him down on strikes. Still that runner in play, tying run coming to the plate here. Colin Summerhill, the right fielder 0 for 4 on the day, climbs into the box, righty on righty matchup with a runner at first and one out. First pitch is foul down the right field line and a head on the count 0 and 1. Tyler Vogel pumping in heat here to start. His fastball lives in the mid 90s, can climb to the high 90s. A guy who the radar guns were flashing for on Tuesday night. You know they were here to see a lot of the Seminoles in action, but they were impressed when he came out of the pen as well. One of those successful junior college arms out of the pen for Jacksonville who gets a swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. And Vogel may be the first true hammer out of the pen for Jacksonville in the back end since Chris Maloney moved on. Maloney now in the Detroit Tigers system. Here's the 0-2 from Vogel. And he strikes out Summerhill looking. Catches the outside corner. Three pitches makes quick work of the right fielder. There are now two outs. And it's up to first William Sullivan, Sullivan to try and extend things. Runner at first. The tying run is Sullivan at the plate. He is hitless today, but he's 0 for 1 with a walk and a pair of hit-by pitches. First pitch, breaking ball called for a strike on the outside edge to the lefty Sullivan. And after missing on a few there early to Wibbs and walking him, Boy Vogel has settled in here nicely. Been able to locate really well, finding his pitches exactly where he wants them. Able to work ahead in each and every count. Again, that deep shift on for Sullivan, the lefty, who takes a fastball high to even the count at one. Jacksonville hasn't been a super heavy shift team in the past, but with 
Assistant Coach Brad Wilkerson, the former major leaguer in his second year with the team, is starting to institute more of that this season. He's got Clayton Hodges playing on the warning track out and right. 1-1 one, one pitch, and a changeup stays away. Hodges is basically at the warning track and right. Pacheco is playing in right field, the second baseman, with Coy Pell with his heels resting on the edge of the outfield grass behind the bag at first. It looks like the Dolphins have picked out one or two players to start implementing that shift with. The 2-1. Fouled straight back to the netting, and the Trojans are down to their final strike. Can Vogel do it again? Wind has completely died down here at John Session Stadium. Sun back out on this Sunday afternoon as Jacksonville looks for a series victory. Runner on first, two outs. Jacksonville hitting 5-3 to three in the top of the ninth. The right-hander from Dunedin sets, comes home, 2-2 pitch, and he really reared back and fired and a little extra on that one, a fastball that misses in. Full count to William Sullivan, who has just been a man on base here today, manufacturing th three trips to first. Does he have another one in him? Vogel with a deep breath, comes home, payoff pitch. Hot shot back up the middle, over the glove of the leaping shortstop, Malloy into center. Runner goes down to third. The throw in is cut off by Coy Pell. And Sullivan with his first hit of the day, puts the tying run on and brings the go-ahead run to the plate. Sullivan smoked that one. Looked like Vogel had a shot at it. Malloy definitely a shot at it. Gets over both of them. Finds its way in the center field. Well, earlier in the game, we talked about how Malloy was probably happy that he was a little more on the shorter side. On that one, I bet he wished he had another inch or two because he might have snagged it. But you're right. That was a screaming line drive back up the middle. William Sullivan with a big base hit to extend this ball game for Troy, who are not done yet. And Cameron Gray, who walked as a pinch hitter back in the eighth inning, Stands in for the second time today. Pinch run.